Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Three Man Weave. Avi providing a little uh, media seating for us tomorrow Just here. Get official. Live at the Rose Garden, New Mexico State. The last team to finish up their open practice is on the court right now. We hope that you like the music in the background. Uh, we'll just recap today briefly what the guys last conferences for IU. And from what we've seen, IU probably took their open practice the most serious of the teams that we've seen it. I wouldn't really read too much into that, but it was interesting to see. And probably actually the highlight was Maurice Creek was out there performing some drills. He looked a lot better than I think any of us, any of us thought. Guys, just your brief thoughts on tomorrow. Um, New Mexico State, as we see right now, they do look like a bunch of men. They don't shoot the three ball very well, though, so I think that'll be interesting to see how much zone defense IU plays tomorrow. For me, I think that's kind of the big thing, is keeping them off the glass and playing a little zone defense. I think this is a game where if IU comes in as like an ACC team, not to say the ACC is a soft conference by any means, but if they come in as a, as a team that hasn't played a bunch of physical games with physical teams like Michigan State, Ohio State, Wisconsin, IU is a, is a likely upset candidate in this situation. But the fact that they've been through those games where they've had to, you know, grind out these games and have had to really work for their points on the inside is going to help them against the Mexico State because, like Bowen said, they get a lot of their points on the inside. they got some big boys that are really capable of getting to the foul line getting people out of position, and that's what they're going to look to do against IU tomorrow. So it's going to be interesting to, way, to see the way that you know guys like Cody Zeller and Derek Elson respond to the physicality of what New Mexico State is going to try and bring. Yeah, New Mexico State is in their opponents, which is just that's, un, un, that's unheard, unheard of stat. Yeah, it really is. And, and, and the thing is, there's been one player on the tip of everybody's tongue uh, so far at the tournament, and that has been... But Wilson McGinnis. Wendell. 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 Excuse me. Wendell McGinnis. See, I can't even get it right. Um, Ke Kevin came up to me after the uh, New Mexico State press conference and had some really, really interesting tidbits about what that young man had to say. Kevin. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a journalism major, so I think us three all have a little spot in our heart for him. But yeah, he was really, he had the whole room. Actually, there's only about 10 of us, so I couldn't really say the whole room. But he had everybody laughing stare at the gun hole for press conference dead stone face every time they ask him questions about do you have a swagger he responded with I don't have a swagger I have an aura around me here let me do the next question um, um, what, Wendell what, what, do you, what do you think of the comparisons to Draymond Green I don't like to compare myself to anyone I'm special He's special. And, and to be honest though he is a very very good he's player. a man he looks like Mike Tyson literally he has a neck tattoo. He's every bit of 6'6", 235, and that is going to be an interesting matchup for IU tomorrow is if they do go man, how do you guard him? Because in the past games we've seen Christian Watford guard point guards, and I think that would be your most ideal matchup. Victor Oladipo and Will Sheehy will definitely be giving up some sort of beef if they do guard Wendell. I think you'll see a lot of zone at IU. They basically daring that's just safe to shoot the three ball. Like Connor said, they only make, I think, four threes um, a game, which is not much at all. I think they're last in the whack. So I think that's what you'll see out of IU. But, yeah, to get back to Wendell, he does back it up, though. He averages 18.8 and 10.8 boards a game. That led the whack. Um, it still baffles me how he was not the Commerce Player of the Year. I'm sure his ego has a lot a lot to do with it because I know um, IU is going to be tired after playing four. Nothing's wrong with a little ego. Yeah, but I think with, in terms of postseason awards, that, that's what come to bite you. But I think IU will definitely be glad when this game is over tomorrow because these are men out there. And it's going to be 40 minutes of just tough, tough basketball. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see, see the way that they respond. Abby, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying, from what right now the practice what little I saw of him, McGinnis has this nice little mid-range jumper where, I mean, he was hitting fadeaways and it almost seemed effortless. I mean, granted, they're in practice, they don't have a lot of pressure on you. But still, this guy, I think, can definitely be a legitimate threat. And it's kind of, when you go along with the comparison of Draymond Green, I think one of the things you also bring into it is that this guy is the main focal point of scoring. And it's one of those things where you shut him down, is anybody else going to step up? So I think that's going to be one of the things to watch tomorrow. McKinnis is also the team's leading three-point shooter. Go figure. The guy's made 50 threes this year, which shows, you know, not only his versatility, but the fact that this team just does not shoot the three ball. All their points come from the inside. And the foul line. But we should mention, yeah. I mean, yes, he is, you know, this ego is definitely, you know, taking over really the uh, this, this region, I should say. But it seems like his teammates kind of feed off it. They, they kind of like it. I think that energy gets them going. Um, like Connor said, they don't shoot a lot of threes, but I will give them credit. In the games I've watched, they do know their roles. They don't force a lot of threes. Even when teams play zone, 
They are flying to the grinding out 25, 30 second half court sets and really pounding the ball down, down low. So for IU tomorrow, Tom Crean said it time after time today in the uh, press conference. Verticality. His guys have got to be vertical. Cody Zeller, Watford, those guys, if they get into any serious foul trouble, I think we'll see a game. Uh, but I think it'll be a high, high scoring affair for sure. I think IU will get up and run. And I think definitely the three point arc is going to be huge. It's something that uh, head coach Marvin Mintz has talked about as well in the press conference. Aggies averaging 71, a little over 71 possessions a game. I mean, they really get to get up and go. And honestly, I think if this turns into a faster paced affair, I think that favors IU because that's really where they like to thrive. And maybe we could see another Iowa IU type game. And, right. and Cody Zeller also, real quick, just hinted on the fact that. Um, IU is going to look to get out early, get out with a big lead early against this team because, you know, like we talked about, they don't necessarily shoot the three, so that could be a big factor if this team does get down. They can't afford to necessarily trade baskets with, I, with IU for the rest of the second half if this lead blues into a 15, 16 point lead. And you see the tournament every year. You don't want to let these teams ha hang around. I know they were playing games last night, but Western, Western Kentucky blew a 16 point lead, or excuse me, Mississippi Valley State blew a 16 point lead four minutes ago last night. How about BYU? And BYU yeah. blew a 25 point lead. So you don't want to let these teams hang around. They will play for 40 minutes. Guys, looking at IU's personnel real fast, we saw Remy Abel hand the ball a lot today, and IU's kind of half court drills as they did. How do you think Abel will play? It sounds like, it seems like to us watching, Tom Crane is very content and happy with him playing maybe 10 to 15 minutes tomorrow and kind of being that second ball handler behind Jordan Holtz. Somebody's got to fill that those minutes for Verdell Jones because Jordan Holtz is not going to play 40 minutes. That's not the way Tom Green operates. He's not going to play 35. I yeah, mean, so, so Remy Abel's going to have, you know, maybe 15 big minutes tomorrow where he doesn't have to be that scorer, but he's got to handle the ball. He's got to play good defense, and that's exactly what Tom Green's going to ask to do. Or as, that's what he's going to ask him to do. I was impressed with him um, in the game against Wisconsin where basically he came off the bench. I think he put 15 minutes into the game. And like Connor said, it's not that he did anything spectacular, but they need him to be in a role where he's not, not, he's not, he does, he's doing more neutral than harm. You know, they don't want him to be turning the ball over. As long as he can kind of set up the offense, take the ball down court, you know, handle the tempo, I think that's what they need him to do. They don't need him to go out there and score 15 points because, frankly, that's not the type of player he is. He's got enough talent around him. And, and the that, fact that, that he was yeah. able to go into Banker's Life Field's house, into the Big Ten tournament as a freshman and kind of handle that pressure was a really encouraging sign to me. Obviously, the NCAA is a different is a different feel, but still, you know, gave me some more confidence to his abilities. And he did that with a probably less than 24 hours notice in terms of Verdell's injury to him accepting that role. Uh, it's kind of weird to think that maybe the X factor in this game is probably Watford, but you got to throw Abel in there. He wasn't even on IU's radar, at least IU fans' radar, this time last year, committed to late April. Guys, quickly, key to the game. We've talked about a number of things. Connor, I'll start with you. I'm going to say staying out of foul trouble. Uh, New Mexico State is number one in the country in free throws made. Yes, yeah, number one in the country. So And they don't shoot it at that high of a rate, or at least like yeah, I think they're 68 percent or something right, right but, here. But they get teams they get in foul small. trouble, and if they if they can get Cody Zeller and Derek Allison in foul trouble early on, this is going to be a tough game for IU to stick out and to pull ahead in. Because you know what, guys play different when they're in foul trouble, and that's I think what we'll see tomorrow if that were to happen. I'm actually going to go ahead with the single player and say Victor Oladipo. Victor Oladipo, a guy that has really kind of, I feel like for the latter half of the season, come into his own as a very aggressive player. He's going to shoot the ball a lot. He's going to drive a lot. And when he's on, he's on. He's drawing fouls. He's comfortable in his game. Other times against Wisconsin, two for 11, I think really hurt the Hoosiers. Gave them a lot of bad possessions. Missed a lot of bunnies, a lot of shots close to the basket. I think if Victor Oladipo continues that aggressive play and is able to actually be productive, that could be a big key for IU. Can't play out of control. I think Victor is 6 of 26 in his last three games. I'll go with uh, the kid who says he's special and doesn't compare himself to the Big Ten Player of the Year, Wendell McKinnis. I can I, see I, him. I think you're special. I, I think I, both I could see him shooting his team right into the second round, and I could very well see a team shooting his team right out of it within the first 20 minutes. So I think that's going to be key. People forget the only players on the court that have any NCAA tournament experience are the three seniors for the Aggies. Yeah, they all started two years ago against Michigan State a game that they only lost by three. But looking back on it, Ernest LaRoche and Wendell McKinnis combined one for 12 in that game. So, you know, those two definitely want to kind of make things different now. So, for Connor O'Dara, Avi Zalem, Kevin Bowen, it'll be a late start tomorrow, 940 Eastern, but uh, we'll get that three-man weave.
up uh, probably about one to two in the morning. So we've been after the have a good one, guys. Good to be here in Florida. <laughs>